Because if you're going to go big, why not go all the way? Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new video. Just going to warn you that this is a really long one. But there is a ton of good information in this one, especially if you are considering buying a Chanel Classic Lap. I know these videos were really helpful for me when I was considering buying one. I'm going to try to add some timestamps. I'm still learning this editing thing, so I'll get there eventually. But in this video, I'm going to compare different sizes of the bag, how I use them, what I typically carry inside, briefly the wear and tear so far, there's hardly any, and how I store each bag. I've also got some watch shots as well, so without further ado, grab your coffee or laundry or start your workout and let's get into it. Hey everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Jasmine, and if you are a subscriber, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a comparison video uh, with a bit of a mini review of my Chanel Classic Double Flaps. I do have other Classic Double Flaps but I'm just showing you the three sizes in the same color just because visually it is easier to see. Uh, if I had like say one in the lighter color, sometimes it, you can't really uh, gauge the size difference so I thought I'd keep it consistent. Two of these are in the caviar leather and one of them is in the lambskin leather. So I don't have the medium flaps in the caviar, I have them in lambskin for a reason. So we're starting off, we've got the maxi size which is the largest then we've got the jumbo size, and then we've got the medium large. I don't have a small. The small is um, smaller than the medium large. It's more square, but this is. These are the three sort of go-to, very popular sizes. I know that the small was popular because of the price point, as compared to the medium large and the jumbo. But you know, since May of 2020, that has skyrocketed in price as well. So Chanel caught on, and uh, they increased the price of that one. Speaking of price increases, as we know, the price of Chanel increases every single year, usually twice a year, and is very discouraging, especially uh, this May of 2020. They did increase uh, the prices of Chanel Classic Flaps or their Classic line by at least uh, just about 20%, uh, especially in Canada. And it has been uh, pretty discouraging, but the price increases are done for certain reasons. There are reasons for the price increases. One is they wanted to keep their boutique, so their boutiques running and they wanted to keep all of their staff, not just their sales associates, but the people that work in their uh, factories. They also wanted to harmonize the pricing because of course currencies did change due to the pandemic. There's a variety of reasons and you know, we all feel differently about that, but let's not get into that. But the price, the price of these items are growing every single year and if you are on the hunt or in the market for a Chanel classic flap, I'm sure you're doing your research. I'm sure you're looking at every single video online. And just like how when I was shopping for these bags, I also wanted to know what people's experiences were and what they looked like and how they wore, etc. So I thought I'd just do this, um, you know, sort of comparison video because then you can figure out what is the right size for you. Do you need all three? Hell no, you don't. I bought all three. I'm glad I bought all three. I mean, I love all three, <laughs> but uh, you don't need all three. Uh, you maybe only need one or two one or two. You don't need all three. So, and I'll, and I'll discuss that with you and what I bought first, what I bought second, what I bought last. So before I get started, if you like these type of videos, if you like seeing unboxing videos, if you like seeing videos on luxury fashion and luxury handbags, then you're really going to like it here. So if you could, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and also tap that bell notification so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. The response to my channel has been overwhelming. So just yesterday, my channel hit 600 subscribers, which is unreal. I didn't expect that kind of response but uh, I'm so grateful for all of your support and all of your kind comments uh, in uh, my videos as well as on my Instagram. It is very encouraging and it just makes me feel more motivated to do these videos. Given my job, I don't have a lot of time 
so I'm doing this just for fun and just to you know make friends online and so far I'm enjoying it a lot as you know I am doing a giveaway so the giveaway ends August 22nd so if you have not entered already I will put the link or I'll put the video somewhere here um, go watch that video and then follow the instructions and then you can enter uh, that giveaway so we will start with the jumbo flap okay so I'll just move these little move these guys to the side okay so the the flaps that I have are all Chanel classic double flaps I know there's a single flap out there those are not in production anymore you usually find those in the pre-loved market and people like the single flap because they are lighter in weight I personally prefer the double flaps just because these bags have a lot more structure and they're also like neat little pockets and stuff that you can put things in. The uh, single flap has one empty compartment. So there are a ton of videos online on the Chanel Classic Double Flap. If you watch them already, they probably go into like the history of the bag, how the interior of the bag is maroon and it matches the uniform that, uh, you know, Coco Chanel was an orphanage and the nuns wore uh, maroon and then it goes into the chain detail that the chains uh, resemble the chains that the custodians had uh, for their keys and whatnot. You have the love letter pocket, like there's so many different tidbits about the history of this bag which I appreciate but I think some of them are maybe wrong or different because if you've watched, if you follow Super Jacob. Uh, he's like, he's, you know, got a wealth of knowledge on Chanel. And if you watch his videos, he's been on YouTube for a really long time. And I can't find that video. If I do, I'll be able to link it. He received a letter from one of his subscribers whose either mother or grandmother used to model for Coco Chanel and did the fashion shows and all that at 31 Rue Campbell. So she gave insight to the bag as to what some of these pockets were for so I thought it was really interesting if I find that video then I'll link it but you know the, his the history of the bag is great but we need to make it relevant for today the working woman today how is it relevant and how we can bring it to our lifestyle so the classic double flap is the first classic flap that I purchased I purchased this in 2016 this was a graduation present to myself when I graduated chiropractic school uh, it was a big thing and I bought this for myself so uh, and I didn't use it for a while uh, because I back then I was carrying everything in the kitchen sink I was carrying like a tote bag and I was like I can't fit anything in here I can't fit my enormous makeup bag I can't fit all that now that you know I've kind of learned how to manage the bag I have you know small leather goods that I use I don't carry everything that I need to carry although this is a jumbo flap you can carry quite a bit but um, at first I wasn't carrying it a whole lot so I'll admit that originally I never liked the classic double flap I thought it was like a grandma type bag and some people still think that but I've grown to love the shape and I just love how functional it is. I love how dressy it looks. So this is the caviar leather with the gold hardware. And I've had this for about four years now and I've used it quite a bit. I do rotate my bags. I don't use the same bag every single day consistently. I'll usually wear a bag for like about a week or two and then I'll switch out into a different bag. So you've got the turn lock closure as you've seen probably in a lot of videos. And when you open the bag, you have one flap and then you have another flap. So it's usually considered a bag within a bag. And some people find this double flap annoying. At first I thought it was weird just because the bag was quite stiff. And as I started to use it, it became a lot more easier to open and get into. Originally when I bought it, yes, it was a bit hard and I felt like I was a bit restricted like I could only open the bag this far and then I have to like really crank it open to get it but as I've used it, it started to relax it started to give and it's much easier for me to use so when you open it at first you have the uh, zipper compartment here which only goes to the top of the bag it's not like the wallet on chain and I'll show you 
So if you have a wallet on chain, there's also a little zipper pocket here. But the difference is with the wallet on chain, you can go all the way down to the back of the bag. It's very functional. I hide a lot of stuff in here. And I'll go and I'll do a video on this. Like, let me know in the comment section below if you want me to do a review on the wallet on chain. These bags don't have the compartment going all the way down. It goes only to the top. First, I thought it was pointless. And then behind this, you've got a pocket that goes you can reach your hand and go in the back and put some stuff in there. Then you have the second flap, it's got a little button and it snaps shut here. I can never get it to close just because if I try, I'm like pushing into the bag and it's just too much of a nuisance so I don't do that. And then you've got the front pocket here, which you can, I, I use this pocket a ton. And then inside the bag, you've got two gusseted pockets and then a third one which is called the lipstick holder mine says chanel made in italy so it's stamped most jumbo flaps the majority are all made in italy some sales associates say that there are no jumbos made in france but the majority of all jumbos or the larger sizes are made in italy and then the smaller sizes are typically made in france you may come across one that's made in France, but it's rare. There's no difference. I prefer things made in France, but I mean, if I don't have a choice, I don't have a choice, right? When you spin the bag around, you have this half moon, they call it the Mona Lisa pocket, and you can put a few things in there, okay? Okay, so usually, what do I typically store in here? So I haven't been using this bag uh, recently. I've been using another classic flap of mine. So otherwise, I wish I was using this so I can show you exactly how, but this is how I typically use it. In the front pocket right here, I usually put, oh gosh, a wide tooth comb just in here. And then I usually stick in the uh, little uh, mitt to buff the bag. And I'll put in like, there's usually like a lot of receipts and stuff like that in this front flap. And then inside the bag, I will put in my mini pochette accessoire in there. And I will put it in sideways. Then I have my card holder and then I put that in the one of the gusseted pockets here. So I stick that in there. And then I have uh, an XL uh, card holder from Chanel. This is in lambskin. I also stick that in here. And it tumbles around in my bag quite a bit and there's like hardly any wear and tear on this lambskin. I just thought I'd show you that. That's it's so nice. I really love this. Okay. Then I have my Hermes uh, Bastia coin purse that I also stick in there, keep stacking. And then I have my key holder. I also stand that up in there. And I have a powder compact, also goes in there. I have a car key, key fob that I put in there as well. Um, then I'll stick in like a little makeup brush if I need to. Usually I don't need it, but I'll just stick it in just like that in the little case. I recently got one of these purse hooks. Um, I haven't used it yet, but let's just throw that in there. And let's throw a mask in there, but if I'm gonna put the mask, I will put it in a Ziploc bag. Don't put your mask in like this because then you're contaminating them. And then I have a little perfume. Uh, this is for, this is like a travel um, little atomizer. Yeah, is it called an atomizer? Okay, yeah, it's a travel spray. It's for the uh, Maison Francis Cook de Maison Francis Cook Jean. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Maison Francis Kirk Jean. Kirk Jean. MFK. <laughs> this is a perfume. And I will stick that in there as well. Now, for cash and money. Money. <laughs> There's this guy on TikTok and he always says, calls money money. So for the money, um, I'll put in some cash in the front here because I don't carry a long wallet, so I'll put it in the front pocket. But this pocket for the jumbo and also for the maxi, the medium, there's the, the pocket's way too small. But anyway, for this size and for the maxi size, you've got quite a bit of space in here. So I open it and I stick in cash. 
just in there and I zip it so it's a little secret pocket for emergency cash if you want to put in like $200 or something like that or more you can stuff it in there just so it's out of sight and um, you know it's there you can also put cash in the back pocket here I usually stick in um, like a pad or something so feminine hygiene products so I'll put in a max uh, like a pad in the back so it's hidden it's not like in your bag and because uh, I wear these bags quite a bit in the fall winter so and then I use them you know for like a good like two three weeks I rotate but then I use them so I'll put it put one in there for emergency and just transfer it to the other bag because you should always I mean, you always need one right so I always keep one hidden in there and yeah that's pretty much how I keep the bag if you really want to put your sunglasses in you can and it closes right so it does you know it's got a good shoulder drop but I'll do like mod shots in comparison of sizes in a bit pretty much the same I will put in the maxi flap okay so it doesn't change although the maxi flap there's just a lot more space and I can put more things in I don't really have to play Tetris so when you have more structured bags um, you know you do kind of have to arrange things like it's not just like keep dumping in um, if you want to keep your things all nice and neat uh, then you do have to keep it organized so I do the same with the maxi flap I'm not going to repack it but do the same thing with this one so the jumbo classic double flap is quite popular I mean it's one of those bags that is like a holy grail bag and a lot of people um, love it for the size and just the functionality and the overall overall aesthetic of the bag. So a lot of people like this uh, size and I did purchase it. I purchased it in the caviar leather with the gold hardware because I think that's a very classic combination. And the caviar leather is uh, supposed to be very hard wearing and you know not prone to as many scratches although you can screw up caviar if you really wanted to. But, and I'll get into that in another video, but Generally speaking, for such a big bag, um, it is wise to have a more durable material. I don't really carry this out in the rain. If I do get caught in the rain, then I will cover it. Um, <laughs> so I shelter the bag and I also sort of wipe it down as soon as I can. But so far, I haven't had any huge issues. I don't really have any sort of corner wear because I am careful. But yeah, you can smooth out the caviar little pebbles eventually uh, just with use. But um, that's because, you know, with wearing a bag, you kind of bump into things and whatnot, but, um, and, or you're putting it down or you're handling it, so you can smooth the corners of this bag. But I haven't noticed a whole lot of wear and tear. I did notice uh, with this one, I think I did have to take this one in for a repair. I don't know if it was this one or my reissue, but the little stitches that hold uh, the flap. Uh, so if you see there's like a little stitch there and then a little stitch there if you keep putting your hand in there Then you will uh, you can risk those stitches coming loose So then you can take it into Chanel and then they hand stitch it back for you um, Provided it's been I think they'll still do it if it's been over a year It just depends on your boutique and your sales associate. I don't put a whole lot of stuff in the uh, back half moon pocket I'll probably put like parking tickets or something like a little receipt or something like that I don't put my phone in there because I don't want to stretch it out and I usually carry my phone in my hand I have a little pop socket one of my really good friends got me one I didn't even know what these were but it's so handy I could just carry my phone like that but if I wanted to I could put my phone inside the bag but just because I'm always needing my phone I don't want to keep having to go into and out of the bag so let's put this aside and we'll get into the maxi flap. I will pack my maxi double flap in the same way. Why did I get the maxi double flap? So after I got the jumbo, about a year or two after, I was in Paris and I saw a girl, uh, very fashionable, and she was wearing this bag. Um, and when I saw it and I just, I did a double take, I'm like, is that a, is that a Chanel double, like classic double flap? And I didn't recognize it because it was just big and it looked like kind of like a briefcase. I love the proportions of the maxi as compared to the jumbo. Just the flap is so nice and elongated and also I find that the maxi tends to have more of a square shape as compared to the jumbo. And I knew that I really I had to have this. So I purchased it a couple of months afterwards and 
I love this. I purchased it in the silver with the silver hardware because I wanted it to be more casual and obviously this isn't going to be an evening bag. This is going to be like a day bag, take it to work, um, you know, take it about your whole day, whatever you want, put everything inside. It fits quite a bit. It's taller and it is wider than the jumbo flaps. So if I compare these two, putting them side to side, it is a bit wider and then this is a bit taller. Okay, and if I put them side by side, width wise, they're pretty comparable, but it's really just the length and the height. But the flap looks longer on this. I just find that it has a more, it's just like more, I don't know. It just looks really nice. <laughs> the flap just looks very elegant in my opinion in this size. So I, it's not like I don't like the jumbo. I do like it, but I do prefer the maxi over the jumbo. In weight, there isn't really a huge difference. And I, I weighed these bags uh, in another video when I was comparing it to my uh, previous unboxing. I'll do the weight again just to be on the safe side. So I've got my little luggage scale here and we'll hook it up and measure. So this is at two pounds in weight, okay, empty. Okay, so two pounds and then let's compare it to the maxi. Just, just over two, maybe like 2.3 pounds. Um, and that's just me weighing it with like this travel. So I'm not, it's not gonna be absolutely precise. I don't have like, the, I think the weight scales don't really take the weight of like two pounds. You need to be, I think at least 50 pounds for those to work. But um, if I measure it, it's just over two pounds. So the weight difference between the two is not so different in my opinion. So. I personally like the look of the maxi. I'm not overly tall. I'm five foot six and I weigh anywhere from 140 to 145 pounds. Like that's what I fluctuate between. I love this. This is amazing for the winter time when you have a big coat on. The strap drop is different. So the strap drop on the maxi, if you double strap it, is um, less than the uh, double flap and I'll measure that for you as well. So I have a measuring tape, and if I measure the strap drop from the top to the top of the bag, it's 13 and a half inches, double strapped. Compared to the maxi, the top to the bottom is 11 and a half inches. So there's a two inch difference of the strap drop when it's double strapped, okay? When you single strap it, I'm gonna have to stand up for this one. So single strap, go all the way down, and we are at 23 and a half inches. And here, sometimes I have to undo the flap to, to get the strap up. Okay. And here we are at 19 and a quarter inch. So 19.25 inches of the strap drop when it's single strapped. So a criticism of the jumbo is that you can only really wear it double strapped because if you, it doesn't matter how tall you are, but you can only wear it double strap because if you wear it single strap, it comes down way too long and I'll do a mod shot of that. I prefer to wear it double strapped anyway. I think it's so comfortable. There is enough room for your arm to rest on the bag. If you're wearing a coat um, or like a parka, which in the winter time in Canada, I do, it is super comfortable. You know, I don't feel restricted at all and it's very comfortable. Same goes for the maxi. I mean, even wearing a winter coat, it works really well. And um, I can wear it double, I can wear it uh, double strap, but I can also wear it single strap on my shoulder if I wanted to. But I think that these bags, the strap is quite thin as compared to the bag. So I think it looks weird if you wear it single strap. I can also single strap the maxi flap and wear it crossbody. 
So it does work. I'm five foot six. I can wear the maxi crossbody if I wanted to. I can also wear the jumbo um, crossbody, but it looks ridiculous. It's pretty long. But there is an interesting way that I like to wear the jumbo just because you have so much strap to work with. I kind of carry it like the Gabrielle uh, bag, so I'll put one strap on my shoulder and one on my opposite shoulder, and it kind of looks kind of like a side backpack type of look, and I think it looks pretty, it makes the bag look very edgy. I also forgot to mention that I discovered that you can arrange the straps in kind of like this X pattern and then weave one arm through one loop and the other through the other loop and kind of carry this bag as a backpack. Uh, it may not be the most practical, but I think it is pretty cute if you want it to be somewhat stylish. Uh, it works. I think it's great. The next look is if you pull in the straps, so if you pull them in all the way, then, and you can probably tie the straps inside with like a ribbon or a bag clip, and you can also kind of carry it as a little briefcase, I think that looks really cute, um, and also you could also tuck it into your arm as like an oversized clutch, like very Bottega inspired. The same can be said for the maxi size. You can tuck in the chain. Again, you can tie it with a ribbon if you wanted to or get like a bag clip or a bag strap clip from Amazon. And that way you just have a little bit of the chain showing at the top and you can carry it top handle like a little briefcase, which is so cute. Um, I would definitely do this. So these are the two uh, comparison between the jumbo and the maxi flap uh, for cons the only con is really the weight once you start putting stuff inside it does get heavy I won't lie if I'm carrying it on my shoulder if I go to the mall um, I'm like okay this is heavy but I suck it up because I like the look of it and I'm getting a bit of an arm workout but you know for your overall health of your neck and your shoulder you really shouldn't be carrying something so heavy on your shoulder but this is fashion and this is a fashion channel and i guess we don't really care about that <laughs> so um i i love these two bags they're very versatile and if i had to choose one i would go for the maxi compared to the jumbo hands down i would go for the maxi because if you're gonna go big why not go all the way why not go all the way and just get the big bag? Some people think it looks ridiculous on them. I don't. This this looks, it's just special in itself. So I prefer the maxi over the jumbo, but again, try it on for yourself. Try on and see the what the look that you're going for. Obviously that the maxi, you probably can't do this as an evening bag. Even with the jumbo, I probably wouldn't do it as an evening bag because it is quite big. Some people do. Sometimes I'm caught using it as an evening bag if I'm taking it from day to night. Um, and because of the gold hardware, it does look very classy. But um, I think they're, I think still the jumbo is too big as an evening bag if you're going out. But again, fashion, you have to own it. And what you wear, if you're confident and you feel good in it, everything works. There's no rules. But for me personally, um, I wouldn't use these as evening bags. So speaking of evening bags, I was missing a bag in my collection at that time. And I wanted to get a classic flap for use in the evening or for use during the daytime when I didn't want to carry a whole lot, but I still wanted to flex Chanel. Um, and it was time that I got the medium classic flap. It is a classic size and I'm so happy that I did purchase it. My rationale for buying it was that, is I wanted something where I didn't have to carry a whole lot and that was lighter. I bought this in lambskin and I know a lot of people are scared of lambskin and I watched a lot of videos, people regretting that they got lambskin um, and some people saying that lambskin was so nice to use and they didn't experience any wear. I wanted the lambskin because I purchased a small leather good in lambskin, which is the Chanel, I think this is called the XL uh, card holder. It's got a pocket on the back and then you open it and it's got um, two large gusset pockets in the front section here at the front. And I purchased this, it's only available in lambskin, so I, I did buy it and I just like, I like the feel of it and I said, okay, I'll keep it in the little dust pouch in my purse. I did that for a while. 
<clears throat> and it was ridiculous because I had to kept I had to keep opening the dust bag to get my wallet, which is so stupid. And then I stopped doing that, and I just kind of kept it in my bag. So usually you're told not to get small leather goods in lambskin because they wear terribly. This has been tumbling around in my bag, and I don't see any scratches on this. I don't see any wear. I don't see any sort of rubbing of the corners. The color is consistent. So I think the more you use it, the nicer it gets, and it develops like this patina over time on this leather. So this is not treated as caviar is. Caviar has kind of like a coating on top, whereas this is actual leather you can feel. And even at Chanel, they, they talk about the beauty of lambskin and that how lambskin is not as delicate as one may think. So I am very impressed with the wear of the lambskin on this item. And because I guess it's a smaller item, you have a little bit more control. Uh, it's not like, you know, for instance, if you're gonna get a bag, if you're gonna get a big bag, get it in caviar because you will be bumping into things. You might, as you're leaving your house, you're probably gonna bump into like the brick wall as you're leaving your door. I have, uh, not the brick wall, but I've had the door kind of get in the way and hit my bag. And there really wasn't any dent on it, but if I was very rough, yes, I could have destroyed it. So with smaller bags, because they're closer to your body, they they are not going to hit things you know you know you can kind of i guess coddle it and protect it but um i was very impressed with the wear of this so that's why i wanted to get the smaller bag in lambskin and i think the lambskin just looks so luxurious and beautiful and i wanted to get a lambskin piece i'm not afraid of using this i am careful with all my bags but for this particular one i wanted to get lambskin with gold hardware because it's just so classic and it feels so nice when you wear it. I've taken this with me traveling. I've taken it to uh, Las Vegas with me. It's been on the conveyor belt. Um, did I have a mini heart attack as it was going through security? Yes, I did, but when it came out, I didn't see anything. And the nice thing about lambskin is you can buff out small scratches or scuffs. I mean, with any bag, if you're gonna take a nail to it, yes, you're gonna destroy it. But I mean, with everyday wear, you you can definitely buff it out. And the good news with lambskin is you can actually treat lambskin and buff things out as compared to caviar. If caviar, if you scrape off the pebbles, that pebble is gone and you can maybe have it painted or, or whatnot, but you can really destroy caviar. Whereas with this, you can refurbish it if you wanted to. Some people think that the quilts uh, or the puff, uh, the puffy quilts do deflate. Um, I don't really, I mean, maybe that will happen. Maybe that will happen with all the bags. I don't know. But the vintage ones, you see that. And it could be because of the way that they were handled and also the type of leather, the type of lambskin they used previously. So these houses do change their materials over time and the lambskin feels quite thick and sturdy so same structure of the bag i mean i just it's the same structure as the maxi and the jumbo you do have this zipper uh, but on the medium flap there's really only if i stick my fingers in there's only about this much space here which is about oh gosh let's measure two inches so there's two inches of space to go up um, I don't really see anything that I'm going to put in there. My husband doesn't write me love letters, so I, I don't have them. He, he writes me emails and that too has stopped ever since we got married. So um, so there's no nothing to hide in there. And uh, so I guess it's just there. I, I, wish they, I wish it went down the back of the bag. That would have made it far more functional. But um, anyway, so you've got the back pocket and then you've got the middle section. So I probably wouldn't put as many things in this as say the jumbo because obviously the size is a lot smaller than the jumbo. So the size between the medium and the jumbo, there's a huge size difference. There is really no in between unless you go for the reissue and I will do a video on that um, in the future. But the uh, this, you know, is meant, I'm using it as kind of like a casual day bag and uh, taking it traveling with me. I'll usually put in like my card holder, my passport, some cash, lipstick, um, and my key if I need to. Uh, but not a whole lot goes in here. Um, you can stuff it, but I don't stuff it uh, at all. But um, this is amazing. I I've, haven't I've had a huge, whole lot of wear. I was encouraged to get the lambskin because Annie Jeffrey on YouTube had the lambskin 
bag and in her videos, although she didn't really do a review on hers, but what, from what I can see in her videos, hers looks great and she takes it, like she uses it a ton. And Mel in Melbourne did uh, a video as well on um, why you shouldn't be afraid of lambskin, so that really encouraged me as well. So um, the weight of this, I tried to measure it, but I don't think my scale is even detecting the weight. I think I need to use a food scale for it. So uh, if I do uh, weigh it, then I'll insert that in the video as well as to how much this exactly weighs. And I might even do it for the jumbo or whatnot if, if I'm able to. It'll probably be in like ounces or something because that's what food scales use. But um, I tried to do it on the, the weighing scale, but it doesn't work. So for strap drop, uh, I'll do that measurement for you. So for strap drop, if you double strap it, then it comes down to nine and a half inches. And if you wear it single strapped, it'll come down to 16 and three quarters. Okay, so 16 and three quarters, yep. 16 and three quarters of, of the strap drop if you wear it single strap. I mostly wear it single strapped. Uh, double strapped, I can but it's like in my armpit and if I'm wearing a coat and whatnot, forget about it. But in the summertime, I could probably pull it off and I do wear it double strapped in the summertime if I'm wearing like a t-shirt or a dress because you know there's not as much bulk. But I wear it usually on one shoulder with the single strap. I can also wear it crossbody and I'm not exactly petite, like I'm not very small and it's not like I'm super, super skinny either. But I can wear it crossbody. It does look a bit high. It does can look a bit ridiculous. But if you want to be functional, I really don't care. I could wear it crossbody. Obviously, only in the summertime because I'm not wearing as much bulky clothing. So my verdict on these bags: um, they are iconic. They're classic. They will never go out of style. As you've probably seen in a lot of videos, if everybody goes on about how classic these bags are and how much they go up in value and how much they go up in price, but um, you can't go wrong with getting a classic flap. And if you are watching this video, you probably are already, you've probably made up your mind that you're going to purchase one of these. So they can go with any outfit. I purposely wore a super, super casual outfit. Um, today I'm off, so I don't need to really wear anything dressy. Um, and it still goes. I will wear, I do wear this to the grocery store. I do wear this to the mall. I do wear this out with friends. I do wear this, you know, when I'm going anywhere basically, and I don't feel out of place. Yes, there are some occasions where you should not wear a Chanel bag. Obviously, there are certain occasions where you shouldn't, and we'll go into that in another video, but typically it goes with any outfit, um, you know, whether you're wearing gold or silver hardware. The gold makes it a bit more dressy, the silver makes it a little bit more edgy. It depends on what you prefer, but both hardwares look amazing if you want to get, you know, the silver versus the gold, it doesn't matter. Um, but I would say that if you wanted a more dressy look, then go for the gold. If you wanted a more laid back look, go for the silver. If you are looking to use this every day um, or just using it to keep a lot of things in, go for the larger sizes. And of the larger sizes, I will go for the maxi. And if I was to purchase it again, I would get the maxi. Of course, I'm happy that I have the jumbo. Don't get me wrong. But if I'm going to advise anybody, get the maxi. Like, just, just get the bigger bag. It's fine. Um, and it just looks sexier. The flap, the dimensions, the proportions, I think it just looks so much more elegant than the jumbo. The jumbo can look a bit squat and fat and, you know, bulbous on the sides, which I don't like. If you are looking for a bag you can take from day to night and is an evening bag as well, you can take it out shopping with you then get the medium classic flap. In fact, actually, if you're gonna get two, because if you're gonna buy Chanel, the addiction is real and you will keep buying them. I'm telling you, you won't stop at one, uh, even though the prices keep going up, but let's just, let's not get into that, but get the medium classic flap and get the maxi. I don't have the small to give you my opinion on, but I mean, I, I mean I'm already kind of struggling with packing this, so I don't, don't think I'll do well with the small, but, the medium is great and then the maxi. These are two of the polar ends of the sizes in my opinion and you'll do really well with both of these. Uh, lambskin versus caviar. If you're going to get a bigger bag, get the caviar. If you're going to get a smaller bag, you have a choice if you want to get the caviar or the lambskin. I really like the lambskin because it's luxurious but you know if you're scared of it then that's understandable because these are not cheap bags. So. The prices are going up. Some people are getting these on the pre-loved market um, for 
a better price because that person is selling it closer to what they paid versus the current price. Um, and you can do your research and your due diligence. I'm not, I don't really shop uh, pre-loved, so I can't really give you a whole lot of advice on that, but I know people that do, and they've been able to score really good deals on their bags, and you're gonna use it, right? These are definitely usable, wearable for, uh, they go with everything, so you can't go wrong. Okay, so I'm gonna get into how I store each bag. So I uh, don't, store them on open shelving. Um, I don't have that sort of closet, at least not yet. So I have I have like your average closet. I've maximized the space as much as I can, but definitely I could definitely use more closet space. <laughs> but um, this is how I store the bags and this is how it's been working for me. So here we've got the maxi flap, here we've got the jumbo flap, and here we've got the uh, medium uh, flap, okay? So let's start with the uh, let's start with the medium flap, okay? So, I'll just move this over. So, with the medium flap, um, the dust bags that you see are the dust bags that you get with every uh, Chanel uh, classic flap. So, whether that be your classic flap with the CC logo or with the reissue, those are classics, you will get this white dust bag. And, um, so usually there's two parts to this dust bag. So if I open it, and you'll understand, um, there is a larger pocket and then there's a smaller pocket. So when I take the dust bag off, then it'll be clearer. But basically what I do is um, I store the chains, not inside the bag, I store them inside the front cover of the dust bag. So let's put this here. So when you get your dust bag, it looks like this, okay? And when you open it, there's one larger pocket here, and then there's one pocket here in the lid of the dust bag. So when I put the bag inside, I take the bag and I put it where the head of the, usually on these dust bags, I don't know if they'll change them in the future, but, um, the top has this kind of cartoony quilting and it says Chanel on the front and then on the inside it has a cartoon sort of illustration of Coco Chanel. So it's like the dust bag is a flat bag in itself, okay? So you take the bag and you put it in the body of the dust bag, the one, the part where you've got Coco Chanel illustrated. So I put it inside this bit here, okay? Then I keep it upside down like this. Then I open the pocket inside the lid and I put the chains in there, okay? So I put the chains in there and then what I do is I flip the bag over like so, so that now the bag, the dust bag is closed and the chains are inside and you know they're not necessarily putting any pressure on the bag they're in there because i found that when i was putting the, the chains inside the bag it was kind of denting the flap so uh, this is how it was designed um this is how you are supposed to store them so if that's how chanel says you're supposed to store it then that's probably the best way. Uh, for added protection, because this is a lambskin bag, although I didn't experience any indenting of the chains onto the bag, even though there are two layers of protection, so you've got the inside um, sort of fabric of this, and then you also got the inside fabric of this, I didn't experience that. But, um, you know, just, just out of protection, like lately what I did was I just put like a little towel and I just sort of stuffed it on top of the chains just for added protection. So it kind of, you know, sits like that. So this is how I store it, and this is how I do it for all the bags, pretty much. Um, in here, uh, for the bag, sometimes you get these uh, pieces of felt when you purchase the bag. Some boutiques will remove it. Um, some boutiques will keep it there, especially when you're getting the, a brand new, like, fresh piece. Um, which this was, this was brand spanking new, it had like the stickers and everything on it, it had all of the felt and all of the stuffing, uh, and I'm sure all of that is kept in the box, um, uh, of the box that came with this bag, I put everything inside. The felt, uh, the, I kept one piece of felt 
and this is this one here. So this is the one that has the little hole inside and you could, you know, stick the turn lock part there and then stuff it in there just so that, you know, you have added protection of the inside uh, quilting here. But so far, like I haven't stuffed the bag. I know some people do stuff the bag. Right now, like the bag is empty. I don't keep it stuffed. Although perhaps I should, but the double flaps are, they've got a lot of good structure to them. So I don't see the need for it. And it's not like I'm really um, putting a lot of stuff in here that it is going to sort of expand. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty, this is, this seems to be working. Okay, so next uh, I'm going to go into the maxi because the jumbo I do something a little bit different. So the maxi, same thing. This is the dust bag that I got with my maxi flap. Same exact design as I've shown before. And as you can see, the chains are in the top flap. And if I take this out... That is there. So same exact dust bag. The chains go into the top lid of the dust bag. I don't think I kept, um, I'll have to check the box. I don't think this came with the felt and all, uh, but you know, it has everything. I did stuff this one with tissue paper just because it's a larger bag and um, you know, there are more chances of it collapsing, but I don't know if it's gonna collapse. I don't think tissue paper is gonna do a whole lot. Maybe you might wanna put in some of the air paper but I heard air paper is not, like you know the big bubble wrap that you get when you <laughs> order your Amazon orders? <laughs> so I had a lot of that lying around, but I heard that that is not good for the, the leather. I don't, I don't know, but I just put like, from all of my other online orders, I get a bunch of tissue paper. So I just stuffed it with the tissue paper inside. So like this, and it is empty inside the bag. And the front flap, I just had this uh, in there. It's not for storage, but I just kind of kept it in there. This is the little mitt that you get um, with the bags. Uh, pretty much all the bags come with like a little uh, booklet and then it's got like this little microfiber sort of knit so that you can sort of polish and buff the bag and buff the hardware. I use this, but I also use like a microfiber towel just put a little bit of water and then I buff out uh, and kind of clean it up before I store it. So sometimes I don't get a chance to do that and then let's say later on if I do have the time I'll go through and just kind of give them a good wipe down. But I do try to do that. I even try to do like the inside. Just you know sometimes you know when you're wearing makeup you get like foundation on your hands and then you touch the bag. Uh, but nowadays because of COVID we're not touching our face so I don't have that problem and I'm not wearing as much makeup anymore but uh, yeah so that's how I store the maxi and I'll quickly put this away so I can show you what I do with the jumbo. Okay so for the jumbo flap uh, I do this particularly with this bag just because um, the jumbo flaps don't have the same sort of square shape for whatever reason. It starts to look kind of squat and rounded and bulbous on the sides and I wasn't really for that look. Same exact dust bag, okay, I put the chains in the top lid, okay, and so the chains go in here and I'm going to pull this out and you'll notice I have this like white ribbon wrapped around it, okay. So opening the bag. I have, um, I actually have two pieces of felt. So for this one, I had uh, uh, recently actually put them in here. I didn't, I didn't store it with the felt before. I think I was just going through all my boxes and I did find that I did have the felt for this. So I thought, okay, why not, right? So you, like if you get a brand, brand new piece, uh, which this was, um, well, they're all brand new, but I mean, I mean like super brand new from the boutique, meaning that the stickers and stuff were not undone and it's from the back and no one's ever touched it. That's what I mean by brand, brand, brand new. <laughs> but um, the, so there's a felt on the top to go uh, on this top flat. And then in here, uh, I've got the same sort of uh, felt with a little hole in it. I bet you could probably just cut up your own if you really wanted the same thing, but 
So inside I do have it stuffed. I did put in, I did use air paper before, but I had a lot of tissue paper, so I just put tissue paper inside. So this ribbon ordeal. Okay, so what I do is, usually with the jumbo flaps, uh, if you notice, they're not as square and sharp looking as the maxi flap, okay? Uh, right now this is looking square and sharp looking, but maybe I'll find some photos and then you'll know what I mean. So these, the walls of the bag, they don't really go in as much as say the medium or the maxi flap. They're not as sharp and upright and they tend to sort of curve out of the bag, especially down here. It kind of it just kind of curves out and I don't really like that look. I, I want it to be nice and square and sharp looking. So to prevent this wall from sort of collapsing and relaxing, I tie a ribbon around the bag. You can actually tie two. I think I have another one in here and I was too lazy to put it on. I just put one. But I was, formerly I was tying two. So I was tying one around here and then one on the top and just sort of encouraging this indentation here, okay? And, you know, you're not tying it too, too tight, but you're, you know, because you don't want to, like, really compress the edges of the bag. But uh, the, it just kind of keeps this kind of pinched in. So it's nice and sharp when you, when you wear it. So I just tie that around and I take it off when, you know, I'm not using it. So if I take it off, I just slide it off just very carefully over the chains. So I have it already pre-tied and then I just slide it back on. Like I don't re-tie it again. If you want to do that, you can do that, but I don't. And it just sort of keeps the structure nice and neat because I, I really was, uh, when I was noticing that, and it's not even like I was overstuffing the bag and it wasn't even like it was losing structure. I'm just doing this for prevention and it seems to work. It works on even some of the mini square flaps or the mini rectangulars. If you look at some of the vintage pieces, they've got a nice sharp edge, but the recent ones, they're all kind of bulbous on the sides. I don't really like the look of that, so if you don't want that to happen, you can just sort of help it along, just sort of indent the sides, and then pinch slightly and tie the ribbon around, and then it keeps it stored nice and square. So that is my sort of mini review of each bag and comparison of each bag. I hope that the mod shots helped you guys out and uh, if you have any further questions then feel free to leave it in the description box below. I, I'm quite um, good at commenting back. I, if I miss your comment I'm sorry it might be that it's not showing up on the account or, or whatnot but I will try to answer as many questions as possible. If I have to do another video then I will do another video so if you have more questions put it in. I wasn't able to film a whole lot more because my camera keeps overheating and I keep having to pause so I lose my train of thought. But uh, hopefully I got all of my points in, whatever I wanted to say. Uh, but I can definitely, definitely do more videos on this because if you're buying this, it's an, it's, it's definitely a, a huge chunk of money that you're putting into this. So if you have, if you want to do your research, absolutely do your research. So I bought all of my bags uh, from the boutique and it was a lovely experience. So um, if you can have that experience, uh, hopefully, um, I wish everybody could have that experience because it is really nice. So, uh, but yes, if you're getting it pre-loved and you're getting a deal, then yes, I love to get things on a deal. So if you get a good item, uh, go for it, okay? Hopefully um, you enjoyed this video. I would love to hear your feedback. So please leave me your comments and questions down below. It really helps me out. And if you could like this video, give it a thumbs up. That also really helps me out. If you could subscribe, that really, really does help me out so um, I'm, I'm really enjoying doing these videos as I've said before and I hope to see you again I have uh, more unboxings to go I'm slowly picking at the pile that I have and I will get back into more unboxings but I will see you in my next video I'm gonna stop rambling now <laughs> okay bye